mentors. Who is your ideal mentor and do you have one? If you don't have good answers to either of these two questions, you are setting yourself up for a difficult, bumpy road in grad school. I'm Professor David Stuckler from Fast Track Grad, and in this video, I want to share with you the strategy I use to find and leverage effective mentors and how that helped me go from a small school in Texas to ultimately becoming a professor at Harvard University. In this video, I'm going to show you not only how to assemble your dream team of effective mentors, but how to avoid some of the most common mistakes in reaching out to them and contacting them. So stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss the end of these strategies and the practical advice to avoid some of the most common mistakes I've seen from my students. So let's dive straight in. First, I want to talk about two common misconceptions that so many students have when it comes to mentors. The first common misconception is that supervisor is not a mentor. Could be, but often is not. Embedded in the name of supervisor, this is somebody who oversees your work. And often their interests are aligned more closely with that of the institution than that of your success in helping you meet your goals. Many universities have to maintain high completion rates, avoid dropout rates to secure governmental funding or uh, complete grants and training grants that they've completed. So their goals may be that of a mentor, but often, especially if a supervisor is assigned to you, uh, those supervisors are first and foremost looking out for themselves and the institution. Second common misconception is that a role model is a mentor. Listen, it's fantastic to have role models. You want to have personal heroes, people whom you aspire to be like, but this does not make an effective mentor. I remember when I was an undergraduate, I chased after uh, repeatedly a personal hero of mine who I was so eager and enthusiastic to learn from. But the sad truth is, this role model was far too busy to invest time and energy into giving me what I needed to get from an effective mentor to help me get to the next level in my graduate journey. So what you can already begin to see is that we're going to set up criteria for what to look for in the right kind of mentor for where you are now. And a good mentor, or even as I'll argue, a combination of mentors should bring you at least five things to help you get to the next step of your graduate journey. The first of these is skills. Doing masters, doing a PhD is very much born out of the idea of a guild, of learning a craft. Often you'll see these mentorship skills relationships between a, say, a father and son or a mother and daughter. Take for example, uh, carpenters. This is a craft that is, tends to be passed down generation after generation where a father would teach his son the essential skills that you couldn't find anywhere else, that you couldn't learn from a book that took experience to guide someone to avoid the most common pitfalls and become a very effective craft maker of wood. The same holds true of your graduate journey. In your field, whether it's in the lab or analyzing big data sets or digging through archival tropes, you need a guide, somebody who's been there before and can pass on to you those skills so that you don't make common mistakes that those mentors themselves have made along the way and they will help you get the right kinds of skills to get you to the next level. The second aspect you want from a mentor is connections. Mentors tend to be much more experienced in the field, much better networked and connected with who is who. When they take you under their wing, they can open that network up to you. And the truth is, most positions that you will get in your field, most promotions, most advancement will not come from your first order close networks, but from your second order contacts in your network. And a mentor done right will open up a, a massive set of contacts and visibility for you that's going to help you get to where you want to go. Third point, in some cases, uh, th these mentors will even open the door for you. The way I got my first internships with the UN when I was a graduate student was from a mentor making a phone call for me. Earlier in my journey, I had a mentor. I wanted to do an internship in Congress in the US. My mentor had a contact 
picked up the phone, said he had a promising student, and like that, I got the position. It's not guaranteed they'll do this, but this so often happens, especially in graduate school, where when you later think about going for jobs, some departments will internally rank their candidates. You want somebody who is fighting your corner. Uh, it could be inside your institution, could be outside your institution, but making sure that your name gets to the top of the pile when being looked at for a position that you want. The fourth thing you're gonna to wanna to get is high value ideas. At the beginning of your journey, sometimes it is hard to tell the wheat from the chaff, the good from the bad. What ideas, what topics are gonna to waste energy, are gonna take you down a rabbit hole and be a dead end. A mentor can guide you and help you stay on the right track. This absolutely happened to me. I wanted to go down a topic that I was incredibly passionate about, but I had a very effective guide tell me to steer clear of it because it would have opened up a world of endless frustration and not taken me down a much more effective, feasible path that helped me get to where I wanted to go. The last area, and this is one that's a little bit softer but can be incredibly important, is emotional support. Because look, doing grad school, as some of you have probably already experienced, is a roller coaster. You're gonna have highs and lows, ups and downs, and it helps to have somebody experienced who you can turn to when you are hitting a low. Somebody who can feed you and nourish you the emotional support that you're going to need. And often the support can come in dealing with issues around burnout, around imposter syndrome, time management, many of these softer areas that can be linked to our states. A good mentor is gonna make sure that if you hit rock bottom, you are not going to sink to the depths of despair, but it's gonna help you pick yourself back up and stay productive, stay focused. So what you can already begin to see is there probably is no one ideal mentor who can satisfy all these needs that you're going to have in your journey. And that's why I advocate for you to start thinking about assembling your dream team of mentors. How can you go about doing this? The dream team, I'm a big fan of basketball for those of you who know me. Uh, the dream team, I'm referring to the first US Olympic team uh, back in the early 90s. And this team was thought to be one of the greatest collection of basketball superstars who ever played the game. And as expected, they sailed through and won gold. Later, in 2004, the US Dream Team at the Olympics didn't have such a successful ride. It was stacked with a bunch of stars, uh, Tim Duncan, Allen Iverson. And the sad thing is, they didn't play ball very well together. They were not able to work as a team and they lost in a stunner to Puerto Rico and they lost again to Lithuania. And my point is not to go down a path of basketball, my point is your dream team needs to be stacked with a complete team, a complete balance of players who can meet the five skills I mentioned before to complete your journey and make sure that you can win. So this means you don't want five centers or five point guards. You need somebody who can open doors and help you with connections. You need somebody who's gonna provide you emotional support. And you need somebody who's going to give you and feed you the skills that you need. So anybody who's gonna be on your team needs to meet two criteria, two very important criteria. And one or the other is not gonna cut it. They need both. And this is what I call qualifying your mentors. So the two things they need, they need to be willing and they need to have the means to get you those five resources I talked about before. So what do I mean by this? So it may be well and good. Some of you may have a supervisor who you're working closely with who is super enthusiastic, super willing to help you. But suppose your goal is to publish in a high impact journal and that supervisor for all their willingness to help you, has never published in a high impact journal, it's very unlikely they're gonna be able to get you where you need to go to meet your goal. They're very willing, but they just don't have the means. Conversely, uh, many students I see link up with some of the most famous people in their field. This is the role model uh, pitfall I talked about earlier. 
And the uh, truth is, yeah, in turning with the example of high impact publications, yeah, they publish a ton of high impact publications. They're getting grants. They're traveling the world. Everybody respects them. They're famous, but they don't have time for you. So they're, they've got the means, but they are not willing. Both of these cases, they don't qualify for the team. These are not people you want on your dream team of mentors. They may be great, keep them in your orbit, keep them in your network, but they are not gonna connect you to the resources that you're gonna need to succeed. And in this qualifying strategy, it's especially important for you as you think about constructing your dream team to understand the academic hierarchy, because for most of you, the, the vast majority of your mentors will be at some point in the academic hierarchy. And that runs from PhD students on one end to the top of the totem pole where I am as a full professor. At each of these points, these professors will have different time and availabilities for you. So for example, full professors, they have permanent positions, they have more time, they could be especially good at connecting you with high value ideas, but they also are very established, more likely to be famous, have big teams of their own, and a lot going on. In the middle of the hierarchy, you've got assistant professors. They are working more than they have ever worked before. They are scrambling against the tenure clock, trying to get to a permanent position. They are still focused on climbing themselves, probably just like you are. They are ones who, yes, they're gonna be at the forefront of the field, but they are gonna be extremely crunched on time. And towards the bottom, other PhD students or postdocs, these often tend to have a lot of time to be right at the forefront of the literature, but are gonna be much weaker on high value ideas, weaker on connections. However, these often could be ideal for connecting you to skills and resources, emotional support, things that are gonna help you get to the next level of your journey. So I want you to think carefully and not just go straight for the full professors, the top of the totem pole, but also think about how people who are just one step ahead of you can fulfill that role of an effective mentor to you at this stage of your journey. So where I've gone with this in this strategy of finding an effective mentor is really a discovery mapping. And it's something that's so critically important, but so few students do it, where you take stock of what are your goals? Where do you want to get to as your next step? What are your main barriers for getting there? What are your areas for development? And to compensate or strengthen and reinforce those areas that you may see as weak points or soft spots in your own development, who is the right person that can plug that own gap in your development and formation? This discovery mapping is something so few students do, but when they do it, it helps them develop a coherent strategy for acquiring the resources they need to prepare to be their best. So what I want you to do after this video is I've dropped below in a link a worksheet defining who your ideal mentor is. I want you to finish that worksheet, complete it, before we go on to the next video where I'm gonna share with you real examples of students who have contacted me, who have tried to get into mentorship relationships with me, what has worked, what has not worked, so that you can be much more effective in crafting your approach and reaching out to those mentors to build up your personal dream team. Oh, and before we go on to the next video, just wanna drop here. If you found this valuable, you may be interested to know that at Fast Track Grad, we actually have a coaching program. Now, I've mentored hundreds of students to connect them with the support, structure, and guidance they need to ensure they have a smooth and successful experience in grad school. Stay tuned, click below, and join us for the next session.